what it takes to beat Legion in a Criterium. Here is my teammate and superstar Ryan to talk us through it. Good to have you back, Ryan. Good to be back on the channel. So you've done it. You've cracked the code, man. <laughs> We're going to talk more about uh, the finish of this race. But before we get to the finish of this race, let's talk about the start of this race. This is the Berkeley Streets Criterium. Did I get that right? Berkeley Streets Criterium? That's right. Part of a two-day Omnium event that included a road race the day before. Uh, the district championship road race, the Berkeley Hills road race. And Tyler Williams from Legion won that. Uh, so he came up. Well, he's actually from Northern California, but he's on a Southern California team. But in any case, he um, put on a show, won the road race, and we're back on this this stage, the Berkeley Streets Criterium, to exact our revenge on Team Mike's Bikes. We had, what, five or six teammates? I was not in this race. You all have to tell us, Ryan. I think we started with six. I was at this race, but I was still, I was still kind of sick with the flu. So I was not racing. I was capturing footage. Um, but, uh, five other teammates, including yourself, definitely, um, definitely one we wanted to win. It's, uh, it's becoming a, a very popular race. It's a new course. Um, look at this thing. We've already done a lap. That was quick, right? Uh, walk us through, walk us through this course, Ryan. Yeah. Super short course. Uh, laps are right around a minute long, a um, little bit of elevation and just crazy technical. We just came through that roundabout there. We're going to run down this hill, pick up a ton of speed into the fastest corner on the track, which is this, this right hander. This is heading into the wind. And then we're going to hit this fast right hander and, and pick up sort of the back, what I would call the back straight, um, which is one of the only places on the course that you could actually put down uh, sustained power, uh, before making the final right hand corner, uh, up the hill and into the, the start finish. So what were you thinking, Ryan? You, you're, you've been going so hot lately. Um, you must've been the protected rider. I was, I finished, uh, I think sixth the day before. Um, so protected as the sprinter, um, you know, but you had a flat the day before and chased back on. So <laughs> it wasn't your day. It could, it could have gone a little better. Um, but, you know, still potentially, uh, you know, looking to place well on the Omnium, but, you know, as a team more concerned with, uh, focusing on a race win this day. Right. Because Tyler probably not gonna be able to catch him. He was, uh, like we said, first the day before, and it's very unlikely you're going to be able to finish six places ahead of him on the crit because he's. Uh, not just a strong road racer, as he demonstrated the day before this, but also a really strong crit racer, sprinter. He's won big national level events. Um, you guys have seen him. Um, you guys have heard of him. And if you haven't, uh, he's just one of the one of the top dogs on Legion. So um, it's cool that they're here. It makes the racing so much more dynamic. There are other riders, Sam, who's in front of you, and you're on him like white on rice. Yeah, Sam's moving up early in the race. You know, it's a technical course, and um, you, you can't, can't hang at the back uh you know things can go right away and i'm already seeing him uh move up towards the front and get in position to potentially jump off the front so a thousand watts to f to win that corner i saw that you weren't you weren't even gonna let one wheel um between you and sam because i'd be looking out for sam too right like the dynamic on legion must be sam is, is just gonna attack early and often to um to set up tyler for the win who's who's more of the sprinter and um, that's the dynamic I would be looking out for. That's what it looks like you're setting up, setting yourself up for too. So when when Sam goes right here, you are just on it right away, huh? Yeah, easier to put myself in a position to cover this attack and and follow the wheel than you know let him get away solo, build a gap, and and have to worry about closing that down. And you guys are going fast through that corner. This is such a good situation for the breakaway. Like you, um, I mean, he's doing a lot of the work to to get it going here, and um, and you're able to to do all of that in the draft and, um, on one of the only like long straightaways of this course. Right. So, uh, he's established a gap. You guys both check over your right hand shoulder right here. And then, and then you just hit him again. Yeah. I decide to attack him into this roundabout and see if I could use, uh, use some handling to, to build a little gap and make, make him work or, um, you know, potentially get away without, uh, without Tyler. That would be a good situation, uh, too. If there's riders behind trying to come across, um, if we could get a move going that Tyler wasn't in, that would be ideal. Um, doesn't play out that way. Uh, but early in the race, kind of testing the corner, seeing if we could make that happen. Right. And when I first watched this, I was like, oh, dang, you're taking a, you're taking a hard pull. And I was thinking, this is a, this is a long pull um, because you, you end up staying on the front here for 
two entire laps. And my first thought, I'll be honest with you, Ryan, my first thought, I was like, oh, Sam must be on your wheel refusing to come through because you have been winning races hand over fist lately. Guys, check the channel if you've missed out on what Ryan's been up to. Um, and I wouldn't, if I was your competition, Ryan, quite frankly, I wouldn't want to do work with you in a breakaway either because you're going so strong in the sprints these days. So that was my first thought. But turns out, as we can see in the shadow now, you were actually solo, you told me, right? Yeah, I had a bit of a gap behind me, and then there was a small chase group. Um, so I was making them work uh, still to, to get up to my wheel. I didn't, I, you know, I wanted to see if they could make it up there. I wasn't going to make it easy on them. Um, but once... And you can... And you can see the gap every every lap because of the nature of the course, this roundabout. But um, but yeah, absolutely. Like if you have a gap, just continue riding within yourself. And and look, this is a feat to stay off the front like this by yourself. But on a course like this, you're rewarded, right? Because you spend like at least 50% of this course either entering or exiting a corner. There's very few instances. This is one of them right here where we're actually dropping the watts, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it allows you to take the exact line that you want to take and carry all of your momentum. So all of that work that you're doing, you get to you get to preserve that energy and, and carry it through the corners um, and be be efficient, even though it's a lot of watts and rest. And when you're cornering, a lot of these corners are, are sharp and technical and fast. You're, you're not pedaling. So like if this were just a big, fast four corner business park crit, you'd have to stay on the power the whole time. And as a sprinter myself, like I, that's not my jam. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, eventually you get caught here. So this is this is Tyler, the, the newly crowned state road race champ on your wheel. How, how did you feel when you saw Tyler come around? I mean, you must have known he was coming, right? Yeah, well, it wasn't a surprise. I, uh, it would have been a surprise if he wasn't there. Um, but now I knew we had a gap. This was this was the break. And at, at this point now, it's it's sort of up to Legion to to drive the break and maintain the gap. Yeah, can we talk about that? Because for, well, first of all, let's talk about who's in the breakaway. It's the two, it's the two Legion riders. It's Tyler and Sam. Um, kudos, kudos to them. I mean, there's two of them in the race. They both make the break. That's pretty impressive. We also shouldn't be surprised. Legion are fantastic bike racers. Um, and then it is, uh, it is you, you're the, the representative from Team Mike Spikes, which the whole team was stoked about, right? Because like you were the guy on the day. So if you can make the breakaway even better, like I always say, it's easier to sprint from a group of four than it, than it is from a group of, of 80, right? So, so this is great news for us. And then the fourth rider, also no surprise, our former teammate, Miles, who's now on Project 74, which is the specialized kind of factory team. Um, another very strong, very capable, both crit and road racer. So, um, that's right. And Miles had finished second uh, in the road race the day before, so also way up there on the Omnium. Right. So, um, so good company in this breakaway, and um, it seems like you guys. I mean, how much work were you doing? Can we talk about that? Uh, like this dynamic when it comes to a breakaway. Like, when do you have to work? When do you have to sit in? Walk us through that, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, in this case, my my entire team is sitting in the field behind, and um, Legion's entire team is in the break here. So. Uh, they have infinitely more motivation to keep this rolling, which means, um, you know, I'm mostly motivated to uh, to not get attacked and do enough work and sort of roll through, um, you know, to keep them from just, you know, riding away from me. But it's not really my responsibility to drive, uh, drive the brake or maintain the gap at this point. So with that said, um, what kind of power does it take to join a P12 breakaway? I mean, we can generalize here. Every situation's a little bit different, but it's probably not what people think. Um, let's talk about the numbers really fast. I, I peeped your Strava, Ryan, and uh, <laughs> I can spoil it a little bit. It was, um, it was three, four, four when this breakaway was established, all the way through this, this period of, um, of relative peace among these breakaway riders. You guys all seem motivated to stay away. No attacking, smooth pulling. 300 watts average from Ryan, 330 watts normalized. On a course like this, that's quite impressive because I would be willing to bet that if we looked, in fact, I kind of want to do this. If we looked at the Strava uh, rides from the people who are back in the, in the field, I'll be willing to bet their normalized power on average is going to be much higher than your normalized power was being in the break, which I think is... Um, would, would, would confuse or surprise a lot of people because they think it's really hard to ride the breakaway. But on a course like this, it's actually easier to be in the breakaway. Wouldn't you say, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just easier to set up for the corners. You don't have people fighting you for position. Um, you know, no one's ducking up the inside of the corner and causing you to hit brakes or 
or take a bad line. Um, so it's a lot more efficient to be in the break. You get to save energy. And then for me in particular, I'm, I'm trying to avoid doing as much work a, as possible in this break because, again, it's, it's not my responsibility to drive it here. Right. And we did look at Sam's um, power file from this race, Sam being the, uh, the Legion rider in front of you now, who ha did have an obligation to pull. He was doing a lot more work in this break, but still pretty modest numbers. I mean, he was, I think, 320-watt average, and it was a 350-watt normalized, which um, is something that, like, I, I guess I should say it this way. The, the power numbers aren't the reason why this group of four is off the front. I mean, it certainly helps to have a really high FTP, but it's the fact that you guys had that race sense to get up here, and then you can ride smooth and efficient and take these ripping lines. I mean, to your point, Ryan, like you guys were going so fast through this course, through these corners, and you're rewarded on a course like this for being in the breakaway. And um, it was relatively peaceful for a while um, until it wasn't. All right, so now we are about halfway through this race, and... The times of peace, the times of, of clean rotations are over, and that all starts with Tyler here on the left putting in a dig. What was going on here, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I was a little surprised it took this long. Uh, you know, this is this is their MO when there's numbers advantage uh, in the breakaway. They're going to start a 1-2 attack sequence, uh, and, and here goes Tyler with the first of them. So you got to cover this. Got to cover this. You can't let either of them get away for sure. And it's an interesting tactic, right? Because if you think about it, you guys are now closer to lapping than you are getting caught. Um, it seems like the lap is, is inevitable at this point. So the fact that they're kind of pouring on the gas now is interesting. Like, I would kind of do the opposite, right? I was thinking, what if I'm in, in uh, Legion's position? They represent two out of the four riders in this breakaway. Their numbers are good, right? Um, so what I would do if I was them is... I would stop rotating at this point. I would do the, the exact opposite, and I would say, okay, Ryan, okay, Miles, it's, your, it's, your, it's on you now. If you want to make the lap, you got to get to the front and start working hard, and we'll sit in and, and rest. And Sam with the big counterattack. Yeah, that seems like they're committed to this thing now. The reason I would do the opposite of what Legion's doing if I was in their position is because, Ryan, you have teammates in the, in the field. You're isolated right now. You always think about people's motivations in bike racing, and you're motivated to, to get up there. And, uh, oh, my God, Sam, it looks like he almost crashed. It looks like he lost his front wheel there for a second. Ryan, just taking the opportunity, putting your head down and going again. He was going so fast through that corner, and then, yeah, hit some bad pavement, and I, I was going to try to capitalize here. And if it meant that uh, – could drop him uh, from the break that that would be ideal if I can get to the field before him and Tyler that's like that's the perfect scenario for me beautiful that would be beautiful because like what I was just saying you have five you have five teammates in in uh, the field and you guys are about to catch so you're always thinking about people's motivations and if I was a legion I wouldn't have put myself in this position where you're able to to counterattack the counterattack and really put the the squeeze on them because you took that bottom corner. I don't think we. I don't think the the GoPro does it justice. You took that high speed bottom of the hill corner about as fast as you possibly can, on a bicycle, and and you put the um, yeah. You really put the pressure on them, uh, and I think you're still away right now. I still don't see the shadows. Do you remember? Were you still solo at this point? I'm looking at the power numbers, thinking they must be reeling me back in um, because I'm not going full gas here. So I think I think they're coming back up on me. But you force them to chase, and there's just this interesting situation. I think they would have been much better served, like I said, of just shutting it down and forcing you and Miles to continue on should you want to, con to, to finish the lap, to finish the, the lapping of the field, because you guys have teammates, they don't. Um, and uh, let's fast forward a bit, see how that plays out. And sure enough, the lap is about to happen. It, it ends up happening just a couple kilometers later. You can see them up there. And Ryan, because you have teammates, see, this is a position my Legion that, that Legion doesn't want. You're going to connect. You're about to connect with your teammates, and you're trying to do that by yourself, right? Yeah. If I can, if I can bridge this final gap uh, solo and get to my teammates and accelerate the field, um, make it hard for Legion to chase back on. That's kind of the ideal scenario. So that's why you're just jamming across here. I was glad the official noticed what was going on and got out of your way there. Whether you realized it or not, he got out of your way. Oh, the motor ref was ripping through this course. Yeah, he was doing a great job. And uh, it's, 
I understand w the intention here of you jumping across. This is so hard, though, because you have two Legion Riders, and they're going to die on that hill, right? They're going to do everything they possibly can not to let this be successful. Plus, it's like it's really hard to coordinate and like orchestrate this whole thing with your teammates because you want them at the front smashing right now as hard as they possibly can, right? Yeah, I noticed they were hanging off the back, uh, you know, keeping an eye on me, looking to see if I would get across. Um, but yeah, at this point, we, we need them on the front, kind of setting the pace uh, as I move up through the field. But turns out everyone ends up making the lap. So now, how does this work in the United States? I, we did a, the Merced commentary, right, um, earlier this year about the, the field getting lapped. There were a lot of comments about how this works, and people have strong opinions on how this works. Here in the U.S., I like the, the way we treat this in the, in the United States. When, when the, the peloton gets lapped, which now has, has happened, um, the only people who are contesting first place are the people that made the lap. Who, um, it's, it's you, the two Legion riders, and then Miles on Project 74. Everyone finishes at the same time, but if you weren't in that breakaway group, even if you win the field sprint, the best you can do is fifth, right? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the teams in the field, uh, you know, they're all aware of that rule and uh, they can impact the race to, you know, accelerate and try to prevent the lap. Um, you know, they can they can work within those rules, too. Right. And you can't drop back like there was controversy. I, I'll link a video to it. Um, there was controversy in a race that I did uh, a few years back where some riders intentionally dropped back to assist their teammate in the breakaway. That is against the rules for obvious reasons. But once you're lapped, once the field gets lapped, then it's ra it's, the race is back on. And this is a fun dynamic. The reason I like this rule, the way we implement uh, a lapped field here in the States, is it completely changes the dynamic of the race. And plus, you have to think about people's motivations, right? Like, you're probably in a much better place now. I think you're um, I mean, you can tell us, Ryan, but I would be stoked if I, if I lapped and now all of a sudden I had access to my five teammates. Yeah, this is a much better situation for me. I think I've got, I think I've got three of them left at this point. Um, but yeah, three teammates is, is better than none, that's for sure. And let's talk about that. Now, with three teammates, now that the, the race dynamic has shifted completely, notice we haven't seen the Legion riders. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're just your shadow. That's what I would be doing. But now you and your teammates, what's the plan to, to win this race? Yeah, it's up to Team Mike Spikes to just control the race, give me a nice, uh, comfy ride. You know, we're gonna we're gonna back my uh, my sprint in you know the closing laps here. So it's really just control the race and go fast enough uh, that no one from the break can attack over the top of us, uh, while making sure I get the smoothest ride possible. Keep it together, give you a smooth ride, and then ideally, if if possible, kind of priority number three is lead things out into the bottom of that final right-hander up the hill. Let's see how that shakes out. So actually, we are not going to see the final few laps because unfortunately, the GoPro decided to kick the bucket with about five laps to go, but we're st we still have some sideline footage. I'm glad I came out, um, even though I was not feeling well on this particular day, to get some footage. But as you can see in the, the uh, final couple laps here before the GoPro crapped out, teammates doing their thing. They did such an amazing job to keep this race together, and that lasted until the final lap. You can see here from the sideline footage that Sam gave it an absolute rip coming through Bell Lap. Dude, I was terrible. I thought you guys were going to crash in that final roundabout. Can you walk us through the final lap, Ryan? Yeah, the team did an amazing job. RJ, Roman, and Dylan keeping it all together, chasing down a couple little attacks um, into that one to go when Sam finally launched it. Uh, I had to cover it, and we all came screaming down the hill with Sam in the lead, Tyler behind him, and then me on Tyler's wheel. And it was basically a drag race uh, down that back straight uh, to that final right corner. Um, and the inside line there, which is the fast line, is also the downwind side. So uh, it was basically a game of chicken into that, that final corner. Uh, I happened to win that game of chicken and get into it first and then just put the power down up the hill uh, to stay in the lead over the line. Had enough to seal the deal. What a boss. Dude, I was so pumped to see you come up that hill. And you're being modest. You, your mountain biking background and your ability to be, I think Tyler said it, like millimeter perfect on your equipment, I think were his exact words, is really, is really a sight to see, Ryan. Amazing result. Couldn't be more stoked for you, man. Um, I'm ex very excited to, to race with you. Um, hopefully this coming weekend we got some things coming up. So as always, guys, stay tuned. Ryan, great having you on. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks, Jeff.
See you guys in the next one.